Good afternoon. That works better than good afternoon. That's terrific. Thank you. Well, welcome back. For uh, We have two panels this afternoon, which are going to be terrific. And I wanted to let you know that we will not take a formal break. So when you need a break, you should take one. And there will be beverages in the East Court between 3 and 4 if you want to get some refreshments. I'm now happy to introduce our second panel, which is going to be talking about promising new approaches to clinical interventions aimed at reducing obesity and preventing the progression and complications of the disease. Our moderator is Dr. Samuel Klein. He is the William Danforth Professor of Medicine and Nutritional Science and Director of the Center for Human Nutrition at Washington University School of Medicine. Our panel members are Dr. Rena Wing, who's Professor of Psychiatry and Human Behavior at Brown Medical School and Director of Weight Control and Diabetes Research Center at the Merriam Hospital. Dr. John Buse, who's Professor of Medicine and Chief of the Division of Endocrinology and as Executive Associate Dean for Clinical Research at the University of North Carolina School of Medicine in Chapel Hill and Dr. Rachel Batterham, who's Professor of Obesity, Diabetes, and Endocrinology at University College London and Head of Obesity and Bariatric Services at the UCL Hospitals. Dr. Klein. Thank you. It's an honor to moderate the, the first NAM postprandial obesity uh, session. <laughs> We do have a distinguished a group of panelists. I think this will be a very, very informative uh, hour that we have going ahead. My job is to provide just an overview and a background structure for what the panelists will be presenting and talking about uh, in just a few moments. So as you, can, as you know, when you go from being lean to being obese, every organ system in the body is adversely affected. But the ones that are affected the most, that are most closely associated with increased body weight are the metabolic abnormalities. And so things like atherogenic dyslipidemia, which is high triglyceride, low HDL cholesterol, increased triglyceride in your liver, and also a decrease in inadequate ability to secrete insulin and insulin resistance, which causes type 2 diabetes, are the key metabolic abnormalities that are associated with obesity that are important risk factors for developing diabetes as well as heart disease. So this is the focus of the meeting this year, is this relationship between obesity and type 2 diabetes, which are important risk factors, not only for heart disease and stroke, but as we saw earlier today as well, a multitude of other uh, abnormalities as well. And so the key questions regarding obesity is why do people become obese in the first place? And so you saw some hints of that earlier today. In fact, it's abnormal to be lean in this country. Two-thirds of the population are overweight uh, or obese. Another key question is why is having excess body fat bad for you? What's the mechanism that's responsible for why increase increasing body fat causes all these metabolic uh, problems. And then why, when you lose weight, is it so therapeutic? Does it improve everything? We're not quite clear on why weight loss is so beneficial. And so this session for this early afternoon is going to focus on what are the best ways to prevent excessive weight gain and the best ways to potentially reduce body weight and body fat once someone is obese. And so as this is really uh, an extension of what you heard this morning regarding the regulation of food intake, which is extraordinarily complex. And this slide is actually quite simplistic. But the brain is a very complicated organ. There are 86 billion neurons in the brain. There's even more oligodendrocytes and other cells that probably have functions as well. And there are more than 100 neurotransmitters. And these neurons all connect through these long uh, chains and connections through electrical and chemical impulses. And so this wiring network is just a complete mess, as you can see here, a histological slide of the brain, where all these things interact with each other, where we try to make these pathways come alive by putting them in different sections of reward mechanisms, behavior mechanisms, and uh, uh, satiety mechanisms, etc. And so we do know now that most of the factors that are involved in regulating food intake come from peripheral organs, that these organs, particularly the GI tract, which is the organ that's most in touch with the food you eat, as well as adipose tissue, which is a measure of your body energy stores, 
releases proteins or hormones or stimulates nerves that go back to the brain that will regulate neurotransmitters to stimulate or inhibit food intake. So the brain is really taking care of everything and controlling everything we do. And in fact, we even heard earlier that even gut bacteria might be involved in this pathway as well in terms of regulating food that we eat. But as you heard earlier as well, what we don't appreciate as much is this executive function of liking and wanting something that can override all of these mechanisms that regulate our food intake. So if you like something and want to eat it, you will do it even if you're full. So if you have a steak for dinner and you're completely full after that steak and someone offers you a steak for dessert, you'll likely decline it. But if they offer you ice cream and apple pie, you'll probably eat that even though you're completely full because you want to have this pleasure and joy of life. And this is what makes the treatment of obesity so complicated because part of our joy and pleasure of life is really uh, eating. The good news about obesity is that it doesn't take much weight loss to have significant medical benefits. This is a study from one of our panelists, Rena Wing, on the Look Ahead trial, which took patients with type 2 diabetes who underwent intensive lifestyle intervention and then retrospectively evaluated the beneficial effects on their metabolic outcomes at one year after having lost weight. And when you divide this into buckets of weight loss from 5 to 10 percent, shown here in red, you see that 5 to 10 percent weight loss causes significant reduction in blood glucose concentrations, triglyceride concentrations, systolic diastolic blood pressure, and increase in HDL cholesterol. So losing a little bit of weight has significant clinical implications for good health. You don't have to lose all the excess weight, but a portion of the excess weight has remarkable metabolic benefits. But this is a tough world uh, that we live in, and there are only really a few treatment options that we have available to manage people who are obese. And this pyramid depicts these options from lifestyle modification of diet and physical activity. Dr. Wing will discuss this. Drug therapy and its relationship to diabetes. Dr. Buse will discuss this. And surgical therapy, uh, which is the most effective treatment we have for obesity. And Dr. Batterham will discuss this. As you go up this pyramid, these treatments are more effective, but they're also more more costly and have more potential serious side effects. So you don't have to be kosher to appreciate that how difficult and toxic uh, this life is. And so as we go through life all wanting to get here, and God knows I've tried now, uh, uh, and uh, hopefully you'll remember this next year when the voting goes out. <clears throat> but we ha I know you're not supposed to do this. You're not supposed to <laughs> campaign. <clears throat> But you can see along the way there's temptations everywhere and we are geared, as Dr. Gearhart showed you earlier today, we are geared to respond to these temptations because that gives us joy and pleasure, these reward mechanisms of wanting to stop and take advantage of all these opportunities to increase our body weight. And so the key is how do we really get people to prevent developing obesity in the first place as was discussed earlier as well as we'll discuss more in this session, how do we get them to lose weight once they become obese. And so with that I think we'll start with our first speaker, the Distinguished uh, Rena Wing.